Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And we're gonna be having a look at a puzzle by um, two of my favorite constructors who always work as a team, full deck and missing a few cards today. And this is a, a zipline puzzle. Well, zipline and killer, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And that reminds me straight away about all of our apps, which include Killer Sudoku and line sudoku as well and are available on links under the video if you go to the app link and uh, click through the older ones are on separate apps and the newer ones are all on the ctc app so do check that out uh, they are they're wonderful content some puzzles by some really good constructors including in fact full deck and missing a few cards i'm happy to say um, so do check those out now we've also of course got patreon where um, April's hunt was dangerous to know about Bond villains and um, lots of correct entries. Do check it out. Join us on Patreon. There's always lots of uh, content there. My crossword solves and Simon's longer Sudoku solves and so on. Um, and of course, you can get our merch and you can get this wonderful Cracking the Cryptic mug, for instance, which says old bobbins on the back. Let's hope that's not appropriate today for me. Um, and you can get Sven Sudoku pad. They're all in the links. Um, but the first one's to this puzzle, Murder on the Zipline Express. So we are going to be the detectives sorting out the murder here. Um, although I don't think there's much story with the puzzle. However, let's do the rules. So normal Sudoku rules apply. One to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Within a cage, digits cannot repeat and must sum to the value shown in the upper left corner. So those three digits add up to 10 and are all different. And then along a zipper line, pairs of digits equidistant from the center of the line have the same sum. So those two add up to the same as those two. And for zipper lines of odd length, I think they all are in this puzzle actually, that sum is the central digit on the line. So that is the sum of those two is the sum of those two. So those are the rules, give it a try. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, ooh, do we have any giveaway cages? No, I don't think so. Oh, we have a useful central column. Right, I immediately get to share a secret with you, and that is that the sum of every row, column, and box in a Sudoku puzzle is always exactly the same, the same number every time. It is 45, because that's the sum of the digits one to nine. Now, if the sum of this column is 45, the whole column, and then we take away the given totals of the cages I've got highlighted, which add up to 29, we get 16. And that means that those two cells are nine and seven. That means that the 12 cage fills with an eight, four pair. That takes the four out of the available digits and means the five cage fills with two, three, and the other digits in the column are one, five, six, which must go in the 12 cage. That doesn't stop this being one, six. Okay, that's nice in a way. Using that secret, I can find the totals of these groups of three digits on the diagonals, but none of them look all that helpful. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm being very dense today. Those two add up to the same as that. And if you add those two to that, so let's call the total of those two x. That is x. The total of the box is 2x. 18 divided by 2 is 9, so that's a 9. So these corner cells are always half the box total, given the symmetry here. That's got to be a six, so that those two can add up to six. Yeah, that's a seven. This one's an eight. That's a six, seven, eight, nine quad around the corners. Um, right, in this box, these digits are one, two, four, and five in some order. That's either a one, five pair or a two, four pair. Now, the, yes. Oh, right. Okay, it was very relevant to add up these groups of three. Uh, sorry, I can't managed to delineate them, but since I know that those two add up to six, finding out the sum of that group of three is suddenly very important. 
which is 12 plus 18, 30, subtracted from 45, 15 there, take away those 6, we're left with a 9. 7, I suppose actually maybe the simple way to do it is multiply 7 by 3 here. That must be the total of the zipper line because we're looking at a 7 there, a 7 pair there, and a 7 pair there. So we multiply it by 3, that's 21, plus that cage is 37. To get to 45, we need an 8. Let's do that here. 48, no, 8 times 3, 24, plus 12 is 36. That's another 9. Um, and this is 27, plus 15 is 42. Have I got that right? 9 times 3 is 27, plus 15 is 42. That's a 3, I think I have. Yeah, I must be right. It just felt too little a number somehow, given that the cage totals didn't seem very different from somewhere like here, but it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so... There's a 9 in this cage, and I know exactly where it goes. I've got those 9s as a guide, ruling out all of those cells. And I've got this 7 saying that neither of these can be a 9. So I can whack in 9 there. Now, in this 12 cage, these two cells add up to 9 by the zipper rule. So to make the cage right, that's a 3. Can I do that and radiate into the centre everywhere? No, because that just worked for 9 here. OK, I know that this is 3, 7, 8 as a cage. That one can't be 3, that one can't be 8. Oh, I see. Now... Right, if this was a... Th yeah, this is going to be the same as the total of that. Therefore, this and this add up to 10. Well, that can't be a 7 then, because we're not allowed to put a 3 here. We're allowed to put 3 or 8 there, and we have 2 or 7 here. I think that's how this works. Um, right, up here. All, well, 6 must be in the 15 cage, and I know that because all the digits apart from 9 go with one of the other digits to make up sums of 9. This, for instance, might be a 1-8 pair, and this might be a 2-7 pair. The remaining digits in the box are going to be 3 and its partner, which can't possibly go on this line, and its partner is 6. And then the other pair that makes up 9, which might be 4-5, but it might not. So there is a 6 in one of those cells. Um, and I'm finding less and less about these corner boxes as I go round them, I think. Oh, no, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, here, four can't go on these zipper lines because four would have to go with another four and they'd be in the same box. So four is in this 12 cage. Again, yes, I suppose it's obvious that's with another pair that makes eight, just as this nine is with a pair that makes seven um, and this six is with a pair that makes nine. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, I don't quite know what to do next, but I mean, there's a lot of places to look. Oh, look, nine, nine, one of these is nine. One of these is nine. Ooh, <clears throat> one of these is eight. Now, I know that, yes, okay, where does eight go in this row? It's a, it's a simple question with a single answer. Eight can't go here because this zipper total would have to be more than 8, and that can't be 9. So 8 goes here, and that's a 1 to make the sum work. Then we've got, this can't be 1, 6 now. It's either 2, 5, or 3, 4. This can't be 9, 1, because... Oh, look, we've got 9s there, so I can ask where does 9 go in column 7. And it can't go in these positions, because the number on the end would have to, the number in the middle of the zipper would have to be bigger. So 9 goes there. Now where does 1 go in the central row? Not in this cage, because it would need to go with 9. Not in this box, because we've got a 1 there already. So it goes in one of these three cells, 
But this is a 156 triple, so they must overlap at the one in the center. <clears throat> That's become a seven just by Sudoku, hadn't spotted it. I have now, and I could have worked out where nine went in this row by exactly the same principles. Have I finished all the nines in the puzzle now? I'm gonna get a nine in one of those cells. Ah, and that, that's interesting. No, I haven't finished off all the nines. They, some remain, oh, I can finish off the one here now because that pair of nines rules out this one. But these nines are interesting because I think they make one of these two digits a five. Because whichever one of the, they're both 14 cages, whichever one of these is a nine, the digits remaining in the cage add up to five and they must be the same as their zipper. So one of these yellow cells is a five, but sadly, I don't know which one. Um, Oh, we need a seven in one of these cells. Yeah, that's really interesting because the pairs that make up eight in this box, they are sitting here and here for one pair, here and here for the other. Oh, I was gonna say there and there, but actually I don't know that. They're in this box with a four is all I know. Can that be a five with a four, three pair there? Yes, I think it can. I think it can. Can that be a five? With a pair adding up to 10 that includes six here. They would be six and four. I can't rule that out. And it's probably something easy to do and I haven't figured it out, but. Okay, let's see what else can we do now. We've got a one or five, no, this is not a one or five pair. That's a one or five or a two or four pair. Yeah, I do sometimes manage to delude myself with zipper lines about how the pairs work. I just have to be a little careful about that. No, I was doing very well on just basic Sudoku. So there's an eight there. One of these is an eight. If it went in one of these cells, the digit here would be a 6 to make the 14 add up. Yeah, it's very interesting how Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards have worked these zipper lines. Because you do get these odd relationships where those two cells add up to this cage total. Those two add up to this one, this cage total. And those two. Those two must add up to 14. I see. And those two must add up to 14. This is how it works. Well, this digit cannot be 9 or 8. If this is a pair that adds up to 14, we can rule out 7, 7. This one can't be high because it sees nine, and 9 or 8. So that is 5 or 6, and it's not 4. This is 9 or 8. Now, can I rule 8 out of this cell? I don't think I can. I was hoping to create an 8-9 pair here and here, but it's sort of not quite worked. Okay, so I just have to be a little more cautious there. Um, we've reached the point where we're slowing down a bit now. There's a 1 in one of those cells. There's... What about this central row? I just feel like I haven't done anything. Ah, oh, there's a five somewhere in the central row. Knowledge bomb. It's not in the 10 cage though, and it's not in those cells because of this five, six pair. Therefore, it's in one of these three cells. Now, there's also a six in the central row, another knowledge bomb. Um. I suppose that can be in the 10 cage, probably is. If that is a six, four pair, this is a two, five pair, that's a three, and then this is a seven, eight pair. That does seem to work. If it's not a six, four pair, the six in the central row is definitely here. Now the five has to go into this cage and we've got six, five, two used up there. That becomes three, seven. 
that becomes a 4 and that becomes an 8. Well, I'm going to sketch these results in um, as candidates because it's quite interesting. So it was either 6 there or this is a 6-4 cage, in which case that's a 2-5 cage. 2-5 and then we have 3, 7 and this is always 8 on both of these reckonings. Maybe I should have been able to work that out. Yes. Well, it's a little bit complicated. The simpler, the simple question of where does eight go in the middle row? You have to bear in mind that although it can't go here or here because there's an eight in one of those cells or in that cage, it could have gone here in an eight two cage. But that falters and fails because then you've put three, four in here and then you can't fit five and six into the row. So eight in the middle row ends up having to be here. Ah, and that's interesting. Now that makes that a nine. To get the 14 sum, we get a five here. I can get rid of the yellow because they were telling me that one of them was a five. But what they're also telling me, remember these two cells add up to 14 as well. Oh, I mustn't forget the 7-7 seven, seven possibility. And indeed, this cell can't be 5, 6, 8, or 9. So it is 7. Oops, not red. It's 7 with a 7 there. And this is now a 7-6-2 cage. 7-6-2-3-9. Um, so 8 is in one of these cells in the box, and therefore 1 in one of those. The 8 fixes this 4-8 pair. I'm really having trouble clicking on the right cells today. 4 is now not in those cells. It is in those instead. And that means 2 is in one of those by the zipper rules. So there's a 2 in one of those. 4 now is ruled out of that cell, which takes 3 out of that one. Now, okay, I falter a bit down in box 7, but now I've got a 1 to work with in one of those cells. Ah, oh, do I know what goes into this 12 cage? Yes, I knew 4 was going into it, so it's now 3 and 4. Now I place 7 by Sudoku. That's a 1 by zipper rules. These are a 2-6 pair that I feel I ought to know the order of and don't, but I've also got a 2-6 pair now in column 7. Where's 8 going to go in this column? That's very neat. It can't go on these zipper lines because their centres are lower. So it goes up there. That places a 1 for me. That 1 rules itself out of that cell, which rules 5 out of that cell. The 7 there has actually done a big job. 3, 8, 7. It's sorted out that whole cage. Now I can place 7 in column 2. I bet I can place... Well, now I can place 9 in column 1, and then I can place 8. Okay, this is flying along now. He says, grinding to a halt. Um, 8, 7, 9, 1. So, that is a 4, 5 pair, and we know the order. That can't be a 5 anymore. So that can't be a 1. So we've now got a 4-5 pair here. And these are from 1-2-3 as numbers. That means these are from 4-5-6. And there must be a 1 in that pair because there's nowhere else for it to go in the column. So there must be a 6 in this row and that sorts out this digit, which is very neat. Very nice. I like how these zippers interact. It's, it's constantly surprising me, if I'm honest. This is a 2-5 pair in the column, because that's all that's left. That 2 has sorted out, firstly, this 6-2 pair. Yeah, that sorts out, no, the 3 sorted out the 4-3 here. 5-3-2-7, this is 6 or 8. It's got to be 8, because that has to be 6. This is now 1, that's a 4. We can finish off all of those zipper lines. Six there. This has to be five in the column now. That's a four. That must be a three on the zipper. That's a six. I 
could have done this central column sometime, central row some time ago, but we get there in the end. That's a two, that makes the cage work. Five and two, five and six. No wonder this was recommended to us. It's a very nice puzzle and unfolding in a very, a very pretty manner, if I'm honest. That's got to be a four, six pair now, so five can go there. Four and six, and that's now one, three, six, four, five, and two, and we go up to the top box. Seven, three, two, and one, and we're done. And the murder has been cleared up on the Orient Express. 480 solves, that's how popular full deck and missing a few cards are. Always producing excellent puzzles. And that was just, you know, a flawless, glut of symmetry. Utterly enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching um, Cracking the Cryptic with us and uh, solving Variant Sudoku. We have great fun doing it and we want to do more. So join us again tomorrow and we'll see you then. Bye for now.